Hey everybody, um, I am just recording this to let you know, um, <laughs> I don't get emotional a lot, um, but this podcast isn't the same today. Today is a little bit of a different episode. Um, we were interviewing Lewis Fountain, he's a great guy, and which is why I'm actually recording this little thing before we get into the podcast because. Lewis is such a one in a million, or sorry, I'll say such a one in a billion person because he's such a genuine person. And I don't know what other words to find. He's so kind. Um, I'm just not as good as describing my emotions as he is. Um, but he is a phenomenal speaker and he gets his point across clearly. And this man has such strong feelings and I'm just at a loss for words. It's hard to describe this. He's such a genuine person where he actually really cares about people and wants to make an impact on their lives. Um, and I felt kind of bad, honestly, because as soon as we turned the camera on, it felt like it was just business. He kind of closed off a little bit. I felt like I caused that because I interrupted him a little bit. I'm like, Lewis, can we start? Uh, because he was talking for, I think, about 10 minutes. And it was such a genuine conversation. And then as soon as I said, can we start, it just fell closed off. I, I just want to say I'm sorry to Lewis because he's such a great guy. Um, this will be part one of two or however many, part one of infinity until Lewis gets tired of us because we want Lewis back on our podcast because he's, he's such a great guy and he's just one of our friends. I would call him kind of like a second father. I still have a father though. Uh, I still have a dad. So he's not my dad. I'll call him an uncle, uncle, uncle Lewis. That's what I'll call him just because um, I feel close to him, honestly. And I, We'll never probably do this again, but I am literally talking to you guys right after I finished recording the episode. So, because I just didn't want to lose any of my emotions that I was feeling, because he just, it's crazy. He's such a real person where he will actually tell you what's on his mind. He's not going to bullshit you and tell you what you want to hear. He just tells you exactly how he's feeling without any bullshit at all. That's, that's all I can. That's all. I, that's how I can describe it. I don't know how else to say it, other than Lewis is such a fucking amazing guy. Where I would have made this episode, like, or, sorry, I would have, I would have talked with him, and just sat down with him, regardless of if there was a camera or not. Which is why I felt so bad when I interrupted him because I, I felt like we lost that connection. So hopefully when. We record the next episode. You guys can kind of see that connection because he's such a ecstatic, very energetic and amazing guy for everything he's gone through in life and everything that he is going through in life. Um, so thank you to Lewis and let's get into the episode. We had half days on Wednesday. Do I put the chairs off of here? Um, it doesn't matter. You either hold it, you can flip it on. And then... Yeah, it's cool. I'll put it right here. Yeah, so he, we had half days on Wednesdays, half days on Sundays. I mean, Saturdays. So we would, like, take take the train to New York, and he would teach me about money and credit, X, Y, Z. So they go to show you. I mean, same with her. Ready? You want to? All right. Go ahead. All right. All right. <laughs> everybody, welcome back to Wealth and Wisdom Weekly. My name is Colston, and I am with Elijah. Uh, what's up, guys? Elijah Lorenzo. Today, we're here with Louis Fountain. I'm going to ask you, what do you have on your feet today? Uh, we, got, uh, we got the bread 11s on all the right, bread. All right, all right. Something slight, you know. Not too bad. That's, That's my second up. time wearing them, though. So. Okay. 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 Looks like the first time they're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thank you to our sponsor, um, National VA Loans, for making this possible. All right. You got big time. You got sponsors and everything. Yeah. Huh? Okay. 
Trying to start barely, making big, barely. trying to get our name out there, barely. barely. As you should. Only two videos, but it's our third one. We're gonna oh, we keep go. pushing up. There we go. But take us back to the beginning. Are you from Iowa? Where, where are you from? I'm not. I'm originally from North, uh, North Philadelphia. Okay. Like, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most um. of my big <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, North Philly originally. I've been in Iowa now for about oh, 13 years, 14 years, 13, 14 years. Yeah. All right. 14 take- winners. And so we heard that. So you went to a private, a private, a, a private school, right, or boarding school? I did. So how, so how were you able to get there? To that. I mean, the, the long short version of it, I had it, it was a random guy that knocked on my door one Saturday morning mm-hmm. after watching me play on Friday night, and he was there to recruit someone else. Mm-hmm. And I was a freshman starting at the time, and that you know where I'm from, that that didn't happen often, right? Right. Needless to say, I, I, I think I, I played pretty well that, that night, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, next thing you know, by the thing, by the boom. And, uh, you know, at the Lawrenceville School, that's where that's where I went. I had to take a test to get in. Mm-hmm. You know, it was pretty, pretty strenuous. Um, that summer, I was like at a basketball camp all, all, in, all summer. I get a call from my mom like, hey, pack your stuff. We going, you got to start school. And boom, that's how I ended up at the Lawrenceville School. Nice. And um, I'm trying to think. Tell us about your dorm. Yeah. That's, that's true. yeah. <laughs> no, there wasn't really a dorm. It was like a big castle. No, so I, I actually had my own room, walk-in closet. Oh, it was, it was amazing. I mean, the, the cafeteria, you made your own omelets. Waffle, like I had a Belgian waffle every day. I probably gained 10 pounds. Um, now, it was totally different than, than my predominantly, you know, black like ninth grade, you know, mm-hmm. adventure uh, school, public school. Um, and it was pretty, I mean, my public school was pretty diverse a little mm-hmm. bit, but once I went there, it was, it was a whole new ball game. I mean, it was literally like, I love the liver, right? And onions, and then yeah. you get a good steak. Mm-hmm. Hard to go back to liver and onions after you have a good steak, yeah. right? So, mm-hmm. um, it, yeah, it me, I'm still friends with, you know, some of my friends, you know, from 10th grade during that experience, but it, it literally introduced me to a different, um, life thought pattern how how to study um credit right mm-hmm. how to like travel i mean look, our our prom was at the wall of historia right so it, it it was it was just different and it was like i had never experienced that before i've been introduced to that before and and it, i think it shaped me moving forward right to be able to um be ambidextrous like i feel like i'm able to go to i can put that suit on and go to a, a, a visit to me and a principal yeah. like yourself today and I probably can also, <laughs> right? I can also put that hoodie on, right, and go to Sixth Avenue right now and, and talk to whomever. Mm-hmm. Do it, right. So it's like, I think, and I think both we, as a society, we need to be more ambidextrous in that space, right, and be able to be upset, accepting of people, and also be able to feel comfortable in all spaces. Like you should never go anywhere and not feel comfortable. Like why? Because yeah. at the end of the day, regardless of the people that's in that room, whether they have money, social economic status, race, whatever, yo, know, you're in a room full of humans. Mm-hmm. So why don't you feel comfortable mm-hmm. and be who you are, yeah. right? Like, would I go to principal with my hat to the back? Probably not. Would I put that suit on? Mm-hmm. Would I probably still have on some Jordans? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, right. So now, I mean, even the culture vultures wear sneakers and suits all day. You weren't like that. Before. I saw like, a, a video at, the, at Washington. They had their suits and, and jays on just to show the younger generation their. Right, yeah. Like I, yeah, I've been rocking. Yeah. Here, so no, it's, I mean, but yeah, again, like we're humans first, and I think we we have to. I put this in a poem recently. I have to do a poem for like this uh the, the Des Moines Partnership Inclusion mm-hmm. Summit on the fifteenth, I believe. Same with plug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go check it out. Go check it out. Uh, and I said we have to hu- we have to humanize being human. Humanize being human again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's be, yeah. Between between feeling, between social media, right? Where Tearing you feel apart. like you have to have a portray a certain way, right? Mm-hmm. And and AI. I mean, there's so many things that it's like we're moving away from just being human. Just see who you are. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I find myself even posting less now because it's like I don't want. I, I want to just be real all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't want, and I don't never just post like good things. Like I want to just post whatever. Like if I'm in a hospital, I'm in a hospital. That's the the realness of it at that during that time, right? So we just have to just be who we are. And a lot of times, to be quite honest, the grace I give people on that is they don't even know who they are. Right? You, I mean, yes, we're ever evolving, but a lot of people just don't know who they are. They know they know they may know who they want to be, 
uh, what they want to look like, or they want people, you know, they, they want people to see, but themselves, they don't really know who they are. And that's the struggle for a lot of people, like young and old. Amen. Hey, this, oh, sorry. Now I'm going to interrupt you. Lewis, can you give us some background on what led you to be who you are today? Mm. If that makes sense? Because you're a very outspoken person, mm-hmm. very yeah. smart person. Kind. And what led you to be like that? Um, I think it started foundationally with, with having a strong um, mother that wanted me to be different than my environment or um, what we saw every day where I grew up in Philly. I think it started with that. And I think parents are good for that. They're, they're good at starting. And I think it's up to you, right, as individuals. That's why I, I hate when parents like take on all the responsibility of a child. It's impo- like, why? You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you can only give the kid, your kids some tools. What they do with those tools is it's on them. And I think what happened was essentially is that I took what my mom gave me and just said I just wanted to be a, a different human. I didn't I didn't know essentially like exactly. I knew I wanted to help people at a young age. I did. I didn't know in what capacity. But I think from what I saw, right, and like my dad, like my dad was a an amazing like basketball football player, had scholarships, and then his mom passed away from cancer came home for the funeral and did drugs for the first time and never, that was it. Like, like literally, boom, like, so I didn't really have a relationship with my dad. Now my dad's family, I'm really close to, like all my aunts and all, it was like eight of them, right? So, but I saw like, wow, like, okay, I knew it. I didn't know what it meant to be a father. I just knew a father. I, I knew I knew who I didn't want to be, right? That type of, you know, cause I'm not a perfect father or anything, but I'm like, I'm present. And that's all, right, you have to be. Like my kid understood, like I'm a superhero. But I'm there. I'm like, he don't know how it will feel without me, unless like I'm sick or something like that. And we've talked about that. But you know, just understanding like this world is is not a is is an evil world. And I don't think we have we're honest enough with ourselves to be like, we don't really live in a good world. Like we're so engulfed in ourselves and our politics and our religion and our money and our every it's like it's always me and not step back to say, yo, this is really not even about us. It's about everything you go through is for someone else, is to help someone else, right? Like, so like the greatest thing that ever happened to me was getting cancer. And so someone would be like, what? That doesn't even make sense. Or use hashtag F cancer. I've never done hashtag. Yo, cancer gave me my life, right? <laughs> cancer gave me um, even more focus and purpose. Like when I'm dealing with like people or my son, I mean, it's given me way more than it's taken. And it's like, we have to look at that from every facet though in life. Like what the things that you feel like, you know, didn't break you actually gave you more strength than you ever thought you had. And I think, you know, going through things though, shape you. Like I've gone through a lot. And I think when you go through those things, your takeaway is like, why am I going through this? And still being positive in that space, like trying to be positive and understanding like, well, damn, if I'm not positive, actually it's going to hurt me. So I'll just stay positive, like you have to, and be okay with the outcome either way. So I think I told you guys earlier, I was okay with going to heaven, right? They gave me a 17% chance to live. If I, I wasn't okay with my son not having a father. He wasn't here. Like, he didn't deserve to go through what I went through, right? Like, I was. that's not what we're going to do. So we're going to break that. And I never felt like I was going to die, to be quite honest. Did it. Like, I was like, I'm going to outlive all, everyone. Like, all my friends, probably. No, true story. Because I was like, I got purpose. I understand, like, I'm here for a reason. When they give you the news, did they give you a certain amount of months, too? Or they were just... That's the percentage. Knowing that at any given time, if I got sick, I could die. I could have died the next day. It, just, it works like that. So I don't... With, 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 with leukemia, I have CML. It doesn't. It wasn't, like, stages. You never have, like, stage one, stage two, stage three, or 50 days to live. You know, it's not like that. I remember when I first got the call, she said, you, you have the good cancer. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't. She's like, well, I mean, it's literally you just have to take a chemo pill and you'll be fine, right? Compared to blah, blah, blah. So she, she kind of, I kind of knew, like, wow, it's not like a death sentence per se. But on the flip side of that, you can get, I can get pneumonia tomorrow and it shuts down. Like, that's it. It's really? like, yeah. So the only thing that can kill me is stress and sick and sick, being sick. So I don't try to be stressed and, yeah. and not be around sick people. And I'm good for the most part. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I take you back a little. So after um, the the boarding school, where did that take you afterwards? Where did what was your next step after the boarding school? After um, wow, so when I was in school, 
my actually my biological dad passed away, right? And which it wasn't a big deal, but it was because at the same time, like my family moved from PA to Atlanta. So then I'm like, I'm just like, I felt like I'm just by myself a little bit, right? So I moved to Atlanta as well. And that was the gift and the curse because I was, I, I think I was getting like, I had momentum in basketball. It wasn't like today where it was like social media, right? Or like, so I was, no, it was like coaches didn't even know where I was at anymore. I mean, it was kind of like that type of space. And I ended up getting, I did get a basketball scholarship to Jackson State University in Mississippi. And I, it's funny because I've always had this thing though, like a complex, like I'm more than just a basketball player. And I think I had, I don't know if I was proving to myself or to everyone else. I don't, I still haven't really thought too much into that, mm -hmm. but it was just like, yo, so I played my first year, but I'm like, yo, I got an academic scholarship. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. I'm done doing this. Right. And I just mm -hmm. went to school and that's just how it went. What'd you major in? Uh, at the time it was, it was English education. I wanted to be a teacher until I started uh, substitute teaching in the summertime, right? It was like mm -hmm. in Mississippi. And, and then I saw the salaries. I was like, yeah, I think I might need to change my major. <laughs> um, and I wasn't, ironically, I wasn't too much into money then. Mm -hmm. and, still, and I'm not still, right? But I, I wanted enough to be able to support my family right. too. But um, did, the, did the teaching aspect change as well? Did you like, did you find out you like teaching or did you not like teaching? Yeah, that's well? what it was. I just found out I probably wouldn't have been a good teacher. Okay. Like I, I probably would have, mm -hmm snapped on one of those kids or something like <laughs> even though i'm great with kids and i say that now jokingly i mm -hmm. probably i still probably would have been an influential teacher i at that time i was like yo i can't, I can't sit in this mm -hmm. room for eight hours. like i probably i'm gonna right. go crazy go ironically mm -hmm. though too it was summer school so it's like <laughs> right oh, like, yeah. that didn't help that like it was during the summertime mm -hmm. and yeah it was a lot going on so i probably didn't have the best perspective of like being a teacher mm -hmm. But I was like, nah, it's not for me. It's like it'd be a little harder nowadays too with phones and social yeah. media. Yeah, way harder nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a very hard time. More power to them. Yeah, and I'm like, I guess even my personality, I'm not like. I remember, I remember this lady telling me, she's like, "Lewis, you're an out the box person. You probably never be a supervisor here, right?" And I was like, pissed. Like, why? What do you mean? She's like, you no, know, to be a supervisor here, you have to, boom, it's straight lace, oh. yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna name the place, but it is what. It, and I was like, okay, I get it. And I think this is like the same as like my major probably are because I was a social psych major, right? It's like, it's so many things I can do with that compared to just being like, you're going to teach English, right? So I think I made the right decision now. It's no different than like you major in business. You can do so much with that, right? Right. Or you can just major in English, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like, well, you can do, you can write books, you can teach. I mean, but it's like, it's still within, mm -hmm. you know, you can be a writer. I mean, whatever, however mm -hmm. you want to look at it. But I do, I think I, I know people. So it's yeah. like, it is only right to like get a major where you're studying people. Yeah. Oh, okay. cool. yeah. yeah. Is that what led you to being um, the equity director at Johnson? Mm, I'm sure. I think my, my life experiences more than my education, like things so, that yeah, I, I learned in my saying. book. Not yeah. Just your education. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I think education is great. How is no. that process of going to obtain the equity? Like, how did you have to All go to a board that, or like how? Well, yeah. I know there's a lot of, uh, conflicts between that well yeah i mean i think so some people were happy that you got the job nah and i and i didn't take it personal yeah i think this is the thing too how, how i approach that position is how i approach life once you get to know someone then and you understand like their life and their life story and and, and their makeup and who they are however you want to look at it then you're, you're able to truly make a decision on how you would like to interact with that person or if that person is good for you or the space you want to be in None of those people are like good or bad or indifferent. Mm -hmm. Actually, sat down and had a conversation with me, right? And I think the only thing that that I regretted was that I wasn't able to defend myself early, right? It was like, or just say something, make a statement, however you want to look at it. So I just took like fifty coffee dates to everyone that um, opposed the position or me. It wasn't me; it was position in general, mm -hmm. right? Um, or not truly understanding what the position means, because at the end of the day. And I say this all that I said this in those 50 coffee dates. I don't think there's no one that I'm sitting across from, right? That would say, I don't want people or, or children to be treated unfairly. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to have I want I want them to have a horrible experience at school because they have blue hair or because they go to a different bathroom. However you want to look at it. And I remember like I struggled my first month, like with emotionally. Like I never, I'm gonna be honest, I never especially like in the black community, it's like, you don't really go to therapy or like you go to church, right? And then yeah. 
So it wasn't like I had someone to talk to and I've never not been a part of a team, right? To where now it was just, I felt like it was just me, right? And I'm in this space where there's no one that looks like me. There's no one that can maybe relate to me mm-hmm. or I could have a conversation with and it's just me. And I remember like tearing up a little bit like in my office and was like, yo, this, is, this doesn't feel good because people oppose wanting young people to be happy. I looked at it more simplistic. Now, some people might talk about CRT and block. And if you really understand CRT, CRT isn't taught in school. Like it's a higher education theory. And it's like a lot of people will say things just to um, make themselves feel better about being whoever they are. What, what is CRT? Would you? I mean, critical race theory. Okay. And it's like, I mean, you can research. I'm not. Mm, but yeah. it's. Should it, it, it shouldn't be taught in school, but this is the thing, you can't erase history either. No. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, we want to erase history mm-hmm. because we don't want a particular group of people to feel bad, blah, and blah. And it's, it shouldn't, we should just take emotions out of it and understand that history is just history. It's not black history, it's not white history, it's just history. And it is what it is. I mean, we often feel bad about something, mm-hmm. right? The Holocaust, like how we treated the Asians, mm-hmm. how white people were uh, treated and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we can just keep going around of like, we don't want to play it, the victim effect. We but it, wanna... that's why, yeah, we're like five, four or five generations mm-hmm. removed. Like you didn't do it. Right. So at the end of the day, that doesn't mean you shouldn't learn about it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, mm-hmm. some people always want to feel how they feel. And they're, they're going to feel like, you know, hey, my kid is, I'm using this for an example. Mm-hmm. My kid is a Christian and I want them to learn Christian values in school. And I'm not going to say I disagree. What I'm going to say is you have options. You can send your kid to a Christian academy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's true. It's like at the end of the day, I went to Catholic school and I'm not even Catholic. I went, mm-hmm. I went to a Christian academy too, right? In like yeah. third grade. I went to public school. I went to prep school. All of those experiences shaped me though. I, I'm not a better Christian because I went to a Christian school. I promise you, right? Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I think as parents, you know, yes, you should guide your children. You should know what they're learning, but you also should give them not like a foundation that it doesn't matter where they go, they're able to thrive and survive. Period. Being comfortable and uncomfortable. Yeah, because it's in the spaces where I've been uncomfortable. Oh, I, but meant, I, I meant to say uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I've learned from that. One. Yeah, yeah. Give them diverse, diverse backgrounds so that they can choose, and it shapes them differently than just forcing one thing upon them. But let's be honest, right? The world isn't all white males. No. It's not all black males. Yeah, of course. It's not all Christians. It's not all Muslims. It's not all whatever. Right. At the end of the day. You have to understand the type of world we live in and be able to thrive and survive in that world and understand, yes, you may have like foundational things that you don't want to go against or who you are. Those, those are great things, right? I don't care if it's Christmas. I don't care. Like every Christmas we make blah, 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 blah. Cool. Mm-hmm. So the people that don't make blah, 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 are they just horrible people? Yeah. No. Like they just don't eat popcorn balls. Like they're good people. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like we have the, and I don't understand. That's something I would never understand. Why can I not, why do I have to, like, if you're not like me mm-hmm. and you don't have values like me even, that we still can't, we, we, I, you have to be against me, mm-hmm. like, personal. There's, like, no gray area in America or just the world right now. Everything's it's black, black and white. And white. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. At the end of the day, if I grew up on a farm, right, and I was a, and I was white, mm-hmm. right, I'd probably be Republican, too. Let's be, that's real. Like, I mean, so why it's like, that? Why is that? I'm just using that as a, no, no, I'm not. why is that? Because, yeah, but why because is that? I'm going to say it like this, because maybe, um, Republicans give great, um, money towards agriculture, right? Like they give a whole bunch of money towards agriculture. I'm going to be Republican. Like, yeah, I don't know. Up, I, I was a kid, right? Then you grow up with your dad and we all run the family farm. Or you grow up in the, the middle of North Philly where I'm from. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Hey, Maybe I think the Republicans are actually pulling things away from the city that I live in. Okay, I'm gonna be a Democrat. Mm-hmm. I didn't really even get a chance to treat. Right, so it's like then you get older and you're like, hold on, maybe I'm an independent. I wish there was a third. <laughs> it's like true story. Like I, yeah. I thought, like excuse me, told it's certain things on both sides that I agree with. Mm-hmm. There's certain things on both sides I don't. It's like there needs to be a, there is a third option, but they need to make it more. But then that, yeah. that, that isn't bringing the polls. That doesn't there's bring the third money. option, but there's no option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and at the end of the day, you always want to do what you feel is best for you. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing. I don't, I mean, not vote straight. I don't Either think, way. I don't think anybody does. Yeah. Uh, well, some people do. So, I mean, some people do. Yeah. Yes. And I think that we have to, again. I think a lot of people are where, where we're trying at, to go though. for like the lesser evil. Is what. Mm-hmm. 
My problem is not, that's not even my problem. Though. My problem is if I don't agree with what you're voting for or who mm-hmm. I hate, you. like, I don't yeah. like you. We can't talk about it. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yo, really? You know what I mean? Oh, let's just not talk childish. about it and still be mm-hmm. friends. Right? It's yeah. Like, because at the end of the day, let's say I agree with abortion. I'm not mm-hmm. saying I do or not. Mm-hmm. Let's say, like, but that's where I am, right? But I only agree with abortion because my sister was raped. Mm-hmm. Right? So, because my sister was raped, now she has to have a baby by a rapist. Mm. Well, maybe I don't agree with that. Okay, if you don't agree with that, it's all right. It's so, it's so, yes, it's not black and white. It's like people like make up their decisions and who they are based on experiences, not so much based on like, I just want to agree with that. You got maybe 1%, but at the end of the day, every, we all have experiences. You know, and that's who, that's how we are shaped and molded. And that's how, you know, we walk in our life and make our decisions and whatever have you. So we have to actually, if we get to learn people, if we humanize humans again, right, and actually talk to people and look at their experiences, then maybe we understand why they vote the way they vote or go do things the way they do things. How do you think we can, I guess, take a step forward to make it so that we're human and humans again? Like, how do we, how do we, I guess? So my son has a mantra. Right, he's like at eight years old, he has a mantra. His mantra is, um, "Kindness is my thing." He's like, "Daddy, kindness is my thing." And we just stop being kind. Like I can cry about it. That we're just as a society, we don't give we don't give people grace. Your eight year old said that. Yeah, he's, at, he's like, "Kindness is like I, I'm gonna like I already looked at put it like on shirt." That kid amazes me. He's, he's a cool kid. Like he's extraordinary, right? Yeah. And I'm not. Just, I used to be like laugh at parents. I always thought their kids was like mm-hmm. like cool or smart. And it's like <laughs> yeah. whatever. All right. And now I'm that dad, right? But he does things where it's like, yo, my mom, like she made me cry today. She was like, you're raising a, a, an amazing son. And I'm like, thanks, mom, right? So I think at the end of the day, we just we're not we're not kind, right? We don't hold the doors for people. We look at old people as like in the way, right? We we just we're we're selfish. And it's like, you know, the greatest thing you can do is talk to an older person. They have wisdom, mm-hmm. right? That's something they have something you can't buy. Empathy, we need more empathy. Oh, mm-hmm. in every facet, right? So, and you know, I don't think that's, I don't know how to how to fix that. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think religion fixes that. The most like, well, we used to go to church back in the day. It's like, well, it was toxic. It was toxic thing going to church too back in the day. Like it's so much, right? And it's like, I don't know. I think we just have to get back to not being so selfish. And and I think that helps. Um, but yes, empathy. All right. Even going into that position at Johnston, it was like, really? Like, because I'm not, I'm an introvert. A lot of people don't know. I think from like being on the news and da 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 da, I was like, oh, and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not. Like, my wife is funny. She's like, I didn't know you was this much of an introvert. Like, oh, I am. And not because I don't like people, mm-hmm. because like people just don't give me energy. Because why? I give myself so much. Mm-hmm. Right. So at the end of the day, it was like, Yo, really? Like all of this just to help kids? Like I was more upset with that mm-hmm. than like me talking about Herschel Walker. I talked about Herschel Walker because like he used to play for the Eagles and he sucked. Like had nothing to do with politics. He wasn't even running politics, yeah. then, right? So it was like, and I'm a huge Eagles fan. But it's like if somebody would have asked me, they would have known that, mm-hmm. right? I was like, I didn't say anything. I said nothing on my social media that would indicate who I vote for, that I'm against anybody. If any, it was it was my perspective of being a black male in Iowa, one, and then two jokes that was jokes on anybody, right? So it was like, yeah, a fly landed on Kent's hair like that, and he just stayed there. He's like, it stayed there. Like, why did he just stay? Why? I don't know. Right? He smelled like I don't. At the end of the day, it was just jokes, but it had nothing to do with like I don't like this or I'm I'm demonizing that. It's like it's not at all, right? So, but people can make narratives all they want, and that's okay too, because I know who I am. Right. That's how you have to work that. So I was never upset about that. I or like my reputation of the people that know me know me. It was more or less like, man, I can't defend myself. He's laughing. He has something I'm to sorry, say. No, I'm, like, I'm still laughing at Mike Pence. Joke yeah. Out the way. Yeah. The fly did just stay there. I'm sorry. So it's then. Fake, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> so then after the Johnston, you went to, you're the coordinator of Des Moines schools now, right? So yeah, it's community schools. Community, you know, yeah. For elementary schools. Yeah. Here, yes, yeah. So, okay. I mean, and this is the thing. I, the feeling in me is loyal, mm-hmm. right? Did I want to leave Johnson? To be honest, no, I didn't. Like to be quite honest at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but my son is in the district, DPS, right? 
um, my supervisor, like she checked on me like every month I was at, you know, I was going through cancer treatment. Like she would check on me. Um, so I just felt like obligated. Like I felt like an obligation. Um, and I'm just loyal to Lisa. Like when she called me to apply, cause I didn't like want to, I was like, I'm good where I'm at. Right. Yeah. Then it was like, well, okay, maybe I can be a more impactful here. And what I've realized, it taught me a lot though, that whole transition, which is if you're impactful, you're impactful. You can be impactful anywhere you go. The kids at, at Johnson needed me just as much as the kids at BMPS, to be quite honest, right? Probably more to be, to be real. Um, but you live with decisions and you grow from them. You don't regret them. That's all I can take from that one. But I enjoy it. I mean, at the end of the day, I still, like, you know, as long as I'm impacting people, I don't care. I, could, I say this all the time now. God, I don't want you to like, put me there. But I'd be like, I could be a Walmart greeter and be impactful. Right? Like at the end of the day. Just choose how, how you choose to. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we often we put a we put a dollar amount or we put a title on something. And it's like that's because of that I can have impact. It's like I have just as much impact when I was the team director at the YMCA. Right? It was the, what was the title on that? But guess how you know how many young people I hired, right? At 14 and 15, and now at 25 and 28, like Mr. Who, thank you. So like still, like I didn't know how much of an impact I had then 10, 15, 10 years later, but it was like, oh yeah. Right. I mean, like I saw, I, I see it. I get the phone calls, the text messages, but I was just the team director. Then it's like, well, you're the director. I mean, it's like, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like when I made $45,000 a year, I was just as happy because that, that wasn't what motivated me. May I ask while it creaked and went or I was, I was at, at the grub. Okay. I, I was in, yeah, I was, I was kind of in the hood a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I would go to one at Creek. I was playing yeah. basketball, but Ryan, Ryan, Ryan was my guy. He was out there. Um, but yeah, no, I was at the grub. Why? Yeah. It was cool. Good, good fun time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What's the grub? Why? I'm not. I'm not, it's on, it's off like 16th street. It's kind of like downtown. It's, they were actually oh, about to close it. Okay. That's where, if you ever had, they had, they have this huge, uh, basketball league for like, um, intramurals, like different high schools. Mm -hmm. It's like okay. huge. It's sponsored by like the Iowa Wolves. Really? Yeah. It's pretty dope. Yeah. I'll check that out. Wilson. Maybe yeah. I, don't, I don't play basketball anymore. But yeah. But if you don't play for the team, it's all the kids that don't play for the team. They all, they all got their own team. It's like pay in and then like, is yeah, it, you pay yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. But like usually like the school does it or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's huge though. It's like, and it's pretty competitive. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I don't want to play for the team, but I play here. Well, the position is you. Yeah. Everybody's playing on there is actually wanting to play. Like this. What? They, they can't hold us down. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it closed at nine. The library is closing in 10 minutes, I guess, guys. So um, hopefully they don't kick us out. What was this an issue? We're not leaving. I played. Yeah, we leave. I thought we were coming out of time. Yeah. <laughs> come out house. Come out and order pizza. Um, I played point guard. Point guard and shooting guard. Yeah, mostly point, though. But I was like a shooting guard and a point guard body, I guess. But I wasn't just happy we got fight about one night. <laughs> no, I was a, I was a big point guard though. Like that was just my position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I shot a lot. My 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 high school teammates were saying I shot a whole lot. Your son's eight, right? He's eight. He's gonna go somewhere that I forgot completely. It's all good. If you had to give your younger self a piece of um, advice, or what would you give your younger self? Or I would tell my younger self. Um, to be comfortable in your skin. Um, up until the age of maybe 10 or 11, so this will be my younger eight year old self, right? I couldn't say my name without, so I couldn't, st like, st I started really bad. Like, I couldn't say my name without stuff. So, if, you, if I say, if you say, hey, what's your name? What's your name? L L L Lewis. As soon as you laugh like that, boom. So now I'm in trouble all the time for fighting, right? Really? Oh yeah. You would fight because of that. Oh yeah. Well, you're making fun of me. You laugh. Should laugh, man. I, I didn't. I don't think that's making fun of him, though. No. Maybe that's what's but you see what I'm that. saying? Yeah. yeah. But I'm the guy that's always being laughed at. Okay. It's like I'm trying to get something out. You weren't laughing at me mm -hmm. right then, right? But it's like at eight years old or ten, nine, it's whatever. More it feels yeah. Way yeah. Gotcha. So I wasn't saying that for you. Personally. No. Yeah. I got you. But I was using that as an example. Like if you made fun, like. So you can't say you're like, 
it would be it wouldn't even be the, like the last per se. It might be something else, uh-huh. like the words after, like gotcha. Like, but you can't say your name, then boom, I'm fighting, right? Then like I'm in trouble, and like I, they trying to put me in special aid, all kind of. It's crazy. Like but I had a mom that was like, "What? Like he just stutters? He ain't, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He ain't stupid? Like what do you mean? Not stupid? Like spend people on special yeah. aid? But he didn't need a, those additional. But I was like stubborn. I didn't go to like speech class. Um, I had a teacher. That's why I like teachers. I would say teachers and social workers are closest to God because they're the only people that truly can change your whole trajectory of your life. Think about all these other professions, right? If you're a teacher, though, it's something you can say or do to a student that literally changed their whole life. If you're a social worker, it's something like you can put them in a position, right, good or bad. Like I'm going to take them out the home and then put them somewhere, right, or what have you want to look at. I'm a social worker at heart. Those two professions, literally, you can change someone's life. So I remember my, my teacher like asked me to stay after class. I'm like, I'm in trouble again, right? Like, what do I do now? It was like a like chorus or something, too. She's like, Louis, you know why you stutter? In my head, I just start cussing her out. If I knew why I stuttered, I wouldn't stutter, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, n- 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 no, ma'am, right? And she's like, you're brilliant. And I just start crying. And I didn't know why I was crying, but I was like, no one had ever called me brilliant. She's like, the words in your brain is just faster than they're able to come out. Like, your your mind's, and it was. Like, my mind's always going, like, all the time. It's exhausting sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Like, trying to, that's why I love movies, because I feel like for two hours, I don't have to think. Slay down a little bit. Yeah, like I go, I I go to sent like I go to the movies at like Jordan Creek mm-hmm. all the time by myself. Like you randomly can just see, like I have like the points. Every, I mean mm-hmm. everything. I go, I, I've saw, I've seen every movie. Do you have a favorite movie? Uh, or a couple? Let me, let me get to it. All right. So I'm like, so she told me she's like, just slow your mind down. I'm like, how do I slow my mind down? Like, so for six months I would talk like this, and now then I'm, like the seventh month you couldn't shut me up. And I've, I have to speak, right, for every job I've ever had, um, which is being impactful, which helping people, whatever. It's like I had to speak. So it's like if that day never happened or if I wasn't, if I didn't go to school that day, or if, I was, if I wasn't willing to accept certain things, right? That's the thing. That was always been my superpower is just listening. And maybe because I couldn't speak well, right, but I would listen and try to apply as much as I could. But if I wasn't, I, I call them angel moments. Like when I write, I'm writing a book and I'm like, yo, like I feel like in life you always have angel moments. Whether you accept those moments that can change your whole trajectory of your life or not, it was there. And I think that's the beauty in like of God. Like he don't, like God to me, like my higher power is like, I'm not going to make the decision for you. You got to make, I'm going I'm to give you the opportunity though. But now if you make it, the, the, that decision, that's on you. Either way, and I'm still going to love you and I'm still going to help, but it's like, yeah, it's no How do you notice those? I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'm, I don't really know what I want to do with my life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I pray and ask, like, God, open my eyes and see, like, what he wants me to do with, mm-hmm. like, how does he want to work with me? So how do I, how do you kind of notice, or is it just kind of well, know when? I think foundationally, right, you know certain things of how you were raised and how you grew up. And I think either way, it's like, ah, I don't think that's the right I want to go. Or it's like, you know what? This aligns with who I am. And so a lot of times, too, I always say it's opposite of what you want to do. It's like confirmation. Like, I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to work there. Right. I just got a prom- I just got a new job at, at, at DMPS and I had a friend call me about the job. Johnson. I didn't apply to that job. Right. And chill out. We got five. <laughs> I didn't apply. I, was like, I didn't want to apply. So I didn't apply. Like a week later, he called me like, Louis, you apply. I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, you got to apply. I think it'd be great. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, another applicant. Like, I don't want to. I just got to, I'm, I'm about to start a new job, yeah. right? Opposite of what I wanted to do. And then it's like, all right, you might pray about it, or you might, something to happen where it's like, are you, I looked like, I looked, I went to their website and I started doing like research. That's the thing, too. Like, mm-hmm. faith without works is dead. You have, once you put the work in, you will see, like, oh, this is where I align with, right? So, and I, I saw like a data point where it said, Jonathan was moving at a faster rate than anyone else with minorities entering the district. Really? Yeah. And I was like, and it was their own like research that they had done. It was just on the website that I don't know how I found it. It was like deep in there. And it was like, okay, maybe I need to apply. And that's why I applied. It had nothing to do with the salary, had nothing to do with the title, had nothing to do with any of that. It was like, yo, can I be impactful here? And that's the thing. You, you are who you are and what's your passion and what's your purpose. That's what will drive you to where you want to go, right? Not, it's not going to be the prestige. 
or shouldn't be. It is not going to be, okay, now I can make X, Y, Z. Those things will come with it. Like that's what you people don't understand. You're still going to get those things you want, right? You're going to get the money. You're going to get, you want to be fly. You want to get whatever. Just do what, yo, do the perfect, like do what you're supposed to do. All this stuff, if it comes. But if you're just doing whatever just to get those things, it's not sustainable. It's just not, right? And you won't be happy. Like it won't give you joy. You'll have a nice watch. You'll have a nice you know, home, whatever, like those. But you're not happy. You're not like, yo, every day, like this is what, it'll be work. I don't, I don't, I've never, I can't, I don't, I've never worked a day in my life. Like, honestly, I'm keeping it real. That's crazy because the first person we ever interviewed, he, he told us maybe four times in the interview, he says, find something that you enjoy so you never have to work another day. No, nah, I do ministry all day. Like, it's, like, it's, it's fun. Like, it's ministry. Like, I love, like, I could do this with you guys every day, right? I could, you know what I mean? Like, it's certain yeah. things, it's not work. It's not, you and I enjoy doing them, right? Like, so that comes with like time and life too. I don't know. Like, I don't know how that works. Some things, I just don't know. I can't answer that, right? So I think it's cutting us off though. Too fast. It could be part one. We can go part two next week. That's all yeah. Part one, yeah. 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 And we can dive into some things as far as whatever. Yeah. I mean deeper or not. We can talk about sneakers. We can talk about we're going deeper. We are not we, we can talk we, about we can talk sneakers, but we're going yeah. deeper than sneakers. We can go for deeper. Sure. Yeah, we can go deeper. We can talk yeah. about um even more so about my cancer journey. And what it's taught me, what I've learned, mm-hmm. um, and how I've grown in that space. Talk about race, religion, politics. We can talk about the job. I'm not, nothing's off limits with you guys. Yeah. And honestly, this is the first time I think I've ever done an interview where nothing was off limits. Really? I don't. I think this is the thing. Like, so. Are people scared to talk about? No, I just don't open myself oh, up. Oh, you know. People. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I, I admire you two, for one. And, and you guys don't even know this. I'm not going to get emotional, but. When I first met you guys, right? Where was it? Uh, while I the toast salon event, right? Yeah, that night. Right. Mm-hmm. I just got back. I just got out of the hospital from being life like I was life flighted from Methodist to Rochester, and that was the first time I ever been scared. Like literally, put me in a helicopter, flew me. I was at Methodist for two weeks, then I was at Rochester for another like two weeks, and and uh, right out right after the statement there, God and uh. That was my first time like out, right? Like I didn't, I still didn't feel well. Like my face was kind of sunken in a little bit. I was real conscious of like how I looked, you know what I mean? Like it's, I hadn't seen I didn't my, notice anything. So well, you hadn't, didn't you, know. you didn't know me. Yeah. But my, like I knew like all my classmates would be there, right? And um, something just drew me to you two though. It was like, I felt comfortable. In the space of being uncomfortable, I felt comfortable. And I appreciated that, you know what I mean? Um, if you know it, like we talked for a while mm-hmm. and then like, and then, um, yeah, from there, it was like, just even how you checked on me, right. Texted me. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, they can get anything they want from me at that point. Right. So that's how, but that's, that's how life should be. Right. It wasn't nothing you gave me or nothing I gave you per se. Think about a lot of relationships are just transactional. It's like, you're not really cool. You're not really friends. It's like, because I have something you want it and you have something that I want it. So now we are, we, we're close. It's a transactional relationship. There's nothing wrong with those, but say what it is. We're not really friends, right? So at the end of the day, it's like, there's nothing that I really want from you guys. And there's nothing you guys really want from me, except like conversation. That's authentic. I can always appreciate that. See you soon. Hold yeah. on, before we end this, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. Cause that means a lot. And I wanted to say this during the whole podcast for today. This is part one, well, part two, wherever Lewis wants to, we can come back here. We can go to his house. I got you there. Um, but as soon as I turned on the camera, I noticed you just changed your kind of light time and stuff. Because without the microphone and the camera on, you were a lot more casual with it. You were getting energetic and everything. You closed off a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of felt bad when I turned that camera on. So no, I think I felt, I felt like when you turn the camera on, like a showtime. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So it wasn't more so like I felt like I had to adjust who I who I am. Okay. I, I think just, you're being authentic. I, yeah, like I didn't I, I didn't want it to be like, okay, like it's the first quarter. Yeah. Like but we wait to the third, fourth quarter, like to yeah. be like, yo, what up? Yeah, it's like first quarter though. I wanted to kinda like I saw you guys 
I wonder, you know what I mean? We got sponsors. Like, I tried to, like, you know. But then, you know. So we went, our sponsors actually don't pay us. It's not that. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, he needs to pay you. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. No, it's not. He gives, that, me yo, talk, he gives like, me it. He gives me it. They have money. Over yeah. my head. No, they have community money, though. They have community, like, where they help do things where they help the community. You get a tax write-off if you sponsor. Yeah, there you go. He gets a tax write-off. Yeah. Hey, Dad, like, I mean, yeah. he's only supposed to do with the roof. But the, the, but the check, that's different. And it's not his money anyway. It's the national bank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but guys, we appreciate you, though. Yeah, but, I appreciate you, Dad. Yeah, we do appreciate you. <laughs> well, do you have any more, anything to wrap it up? No, yeah. no, they, 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 they're ready to go home. Yeah. But yeah, we can't, I mean, listen, guys, we're, we're able to do this again. I'm, I'm, I really am free, like, next Thursday or Friday. So um, yeah. if that's what we want. No, Thursday is really good. Tuesday, I'm back at Mayo. Um, but I still got some stuff going on, like my lips and breaking out and all kind of stuff. It's always something. Whenever so, you're available. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, please, we do this again. Please. And yo, you're more than welcome to come over, man, and like meet my son, like meet my <laughs> wife. Yeah. yeah. That, that's called relationship, like right? It's like yeah. library is cool, but, and I was saying that in my house on purpose, because it's like mm-hmm. at this point, like you're stuck with me. Like I'm going to like mentor you all the way into like you're grown and X, Y, Z. You need, Appreciate first thing that. you said was I, I went to principal. I was like, I know principal. Principal, what do you need a reference letter? What do you need? Right, that's how it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. You got to build bridges, right? At the end of the day, the only way you can build bridges is through relationships. Good. Yeah. This is what I want. This is. Yeah. This feels like actual mm-hmm. conversation just between friends rather mm-hmm. than yeah. a podcast. Exactly. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is what I wanted. Yeah. This is just an add-on. That's it. It's, it's just extra, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, you got to come meet Zai. Get kicked oh, yeah. away. He probably he will he will whoop you like in Super Mario Brothers. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Oh no, he's pretty dope. He's, I got some experience. I mean, he's nice with it. Like, uh, <laughs> but, what is it? The, uh, Smash Bros. Smash yeah. Bros. Oh, yeah, he, he might win. He might Yeah, but no. Yeah, me and my wife, she's way more outgoing and cooler than me, to be quite uh, honest. I don't know about that. I, I promise you she All is. All right, I'll take a word um, of it. But yeah, cool dude. see the collection a little bit. But even, yeah, you can get her perspective as a caregiver, like what she had to go through for five months, right? Like taking care of me at Rochester. Like I, we were in Rochester for five months, right? So yeah, just different perspective and we can do it together, you know, with that. But yeah, I mean, whatever you guys need, man, I, I told you I'm here now. It's all good. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number so, two. So, so much yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. Give me a hug real quick. Actually. Oh, man, so, always, man. buddy. Because, yep. Hey. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> yep. You're so open oh, and man. honest. Yeah. Really, really. My man right here. Yep. Okay, appreciate you guys. Did you, of course. How was the prom? Did you go? Uh, I didn't go to her prom. Ah, you dropped uh, the ball. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. All right. I don't afford grades. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got it.